Now, let us talk about the brief history of insulation and its fundamental in this particular lecture under the edges of uh, chemical process utility. Now, before we go into the detail of this uh, uh, history of uh, insulation, uh, let us have a brief outlook that what we discussed in the previous uh, lecture. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the various models for the slag attack on refractories as we were discussing about the refractories. In this, uh, we discussed uh, about uh, the Konix model, then model for Endel, Fehling and Clay. Apart from this, we discussed about the various kind of refractories uh, like silica, alumina, alumina silicate, chrome, magnesite, uh, all these refractories uh, we discussed uh, in detail. Now, in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to cover about uh, the brief history of thermal insulation. We will discuss about the purpose of uh, thermal insulation. I will have a look about the temperature ranges uh, for the insulation application and uh, we will discuss about the various insulating materials. Apart from this, uh, we will discuss all three modes of heat transfer like conduction, convection and radiation. So, let us start with the brief history of insulation. The true origin of the science is the thermal insulation. However, uh, it is difficult to identify. Now, see the thermal insulation is an integral part of uh, uh, chemical process utilities and without the thermal insulation, you cannot achieve the objective of uh, energy conservation or economics. So, in this aspect, the insulation is very important. And uh, previously, the organic material they had served as the natural prototype of uh, thermal insulators like uh, fur covering the polar bear or feathers on a bird, cotton wool, straw and even hair they serve as uh, the material for the insulation. Now, prehistoric human beings uh, clothed themselves with wool and skin from animals and built homes of wood, stone, earth and other materials for the protection from the cold winter and the heat of summer. For thousands of years, house structure they were designed to the best suited the climate uh, of their respective location. For example, using the earth as an insulator, the Egyptian retired uh, uh, to the coolness of uh, subterranean uh, chambers and grottoes uh, on hot days. Now, historians believe that the ancient Greeks and Romans discovered asbestos and found many uses for it because of its resistance to heat and fire. The Romans even used cork for insulation in shoes in order to keep their feet warm. Early inhabitants of Spain lined their stone houses with cork bark and North um, African natives used cork mixed with the clay for the walls uh, of their dwellings. Now, early inhabitants of Spain lined their stone houses with cork bark and North African natives they used cork mixed with clay to the walls of uh, their dwellings. Now, to keep house hot and warm, um, the hatch huts of uh, Northern Europe they were built with a roof up to 2 feet thick of woven straw and walls of clay and straw. The peoples of the South Seas built huts for uh, dried sea grass. The hollow fiber of uh, the dried sea grass provided a good degree of thermal resistance. Mineral fibers, another important insulating material, this was first used by the natives of Hawaiian Island uh, to blanket and huts. The fiber came into the volcanic deposits where escaping steam had broken the molten lava into fluffy fiber. The blanket type insulation they were being developed throughout in 1890s. Mineral wool was first commercially produced as a pipe insulator in Wales in 1840 and in the United States for the first time in 1875. Uh, it was almost 60 years later in 1897, the C.C. Hall, a chemical engineer, they produced the rock wool. By 1901, he produced this particular product commercially at a plant in Alexandria, Indiana. Fiberglass had its first beginning in ancient Egypt uh, when the people discovered that they could draw hot glass into threads which were placed around the vessel for decoration. 
wood shaving also uh, known as balsa wool were a very popular insulation product due to the wide availability of raw materials and their low cost at the turn of uh, the century and it was very popular in homes of uh, northeastern United States. Straw bell construction also has uh, been around since the frontier days of the United States and is most common in western plain states. Reflective insulation material, they are being used for almost uh, uh, 200 years ago and they are using the bright metallic surfaces, they were first patented in 1804. Aluminium is again very good uh, insulation material. Aluminium eventually became the predominant reflective material, but it did not achieve commercial popularity until 1930. In 1914, the, uh, the two semi-rigid insulation product made from flax, a textile fiber made from plants, they were manufactured in Minnesota called flaxilium and fiber row felt. Insulities was uh, main, uh, manufactured by taking wood pulp waste product known as a sulphite screenings and processing and drying them into a rigid lightweight insulating material. In 1920, Cellutex company introduced an insulating board made from bagasse, a waste byproduct of sugarcane after the juice has been extracted. And this was uh, a first uh, uh, fire resistant insulation board surfaced uh, on uh, one or both sides with asbestos cement. This used primarily for the low cost housing. In 1920, this, uh, this particular era, they saw a measurable rise in the public awareness of the value of thermal insulation and fiber board was the most economical insulation of its time. Slag wool is a, a material made by blowing steam through fluid slag, molten rock, also known as rock wool. Later it was replaced by asbestos. The glass fiber production started uh, in mid-1930. Uh, in 1928, the, the gradual introduction of air conditioning system into home design also contribute to a greater need of uh, thermal insulation in household appliances. During World War II, the use of building insulation was made mandatory to conserve metal required for heating and air conditioning equipment and to save fuel. Uh, the study concluded that if uh, uh, the 72,000 Cape Heart Act houses uh, would have been designed to sufficient thermal standard, the United States government which pays the heating bill as a part of the rent would save around 52 million dollar over 30 years period. Excluded polystyrene insulation originally was developed by the Dow Chemical Company in the United States in early 1940 uh, and also known as styrofoam and it is a very popular, very common insulating material as on date. It was uh, first used as a flotation material in life rafts and uh, lifeboats because its fully closed cell structure renders it highly resistant to water absorption. The insulating properties of styrofoam combined with the advantage of the closed cell structure led to its development as a thermal insulation material. Initial application were in the low temperature situation for cold store floors, wall and ceiling panel and pipe insulations. In 1950, Dow's extruded polystyrene foam extended its impact to other areas of construction industries as thermal insulation in uh, commercial and residential building. Um, as uh, the US paper industry grew in 1940, uh, it was only natural to look uh, uh, to paper byproduct for insulation. Originally manufactured as a sound deadener, uh, paper based cellulose soon caught on, its, uh, on as an effective dense insulation material. The cellulose insulation was, uh, was garnered only a small portion of market as fiberglass became increasingly popular after World War II. After 1970 energy crisis, heavy demand for insulation uh, posed and it induced many new producers to enter the cellulose industry and causing the resurgence of uh, cellulose insulation popularity. Uh, urea formaldehyde foam insulation, sometimes referred as UFFI, uh, this was introduced in the building industry in way back 1960. 
Now, health complaint is started from the occupants of uh, urea formaldehyde foam insulation insulated homes in 1978 and by 1980 UFFIE was banned across Canada reportedly due to the long term health risk to, to occupants of houses insulated with UFFIE. It is the one of the main resin mixture of formaldehyde and all the formaldehyde compounds it contributes the most to indoor air problem because of its water solubility. Now, let us talk about uh, the purpose of thermal insulation. The rate of heat transfer is reduced by the use of thermal insulation hence saving its in energy it is foremost uh, requirement. Process temperature maintenance can be easily maintained. It can help in the prevention of freezing, condensation, vaporization, formation of undesirable compounds. It can help in the protection of a body from injury through the direct contact with the instrument. It can help in the prevention of condensation taking place on the surface of equipment conveying fluids at a very low temperature. It is also beneficial to conserve uh, refrigeration. It is offer better process control by maintaining process temperature. It prevent the exposed surface from corrosion of a refrigerated system above the dew point. It can absorb the vibration generated in the equipment during the operation. A low thermal conductivity is desirable to achieve the maximum resistance to heat transfer. Now, basis of thickness of insulation says that temperature usually uh, uh, specified on the outer surface of the insulation one must consider the heat loss per unit dimension. Now, if economic thickness is considered then necessary information required are cost of heat required, working period and the cost to the finish. The temperature condition for the surface of insulation should be specified. The reason required for the insulation to provide the specified condition at the boundary surface of the containment system, they are to avoid the differential thermal expansion between the insulated surface and adjacent structure, to prevent the condensation of moisture at internal surface, to prevent the condensation of moisture at the external surface and to ensure that the wall of the containment system are not subjected to excess temperature specified fluid condition at the delivery point, special thickness required for the given duty. Let us talk about the temperature ranges. According to the use of insulation in the temperature ranges, insulation can be classified in three different groups. One is the low temperature insulation that is up to 90 degree Celsius. Now, this temperature range cover insulating material for refrigeration, cold and hot water systems and storage tanks, cork, wood, 85 percent magnesia, mineral fibers, polyurethane and expanded polystyrene etcetera they are the commonly used material in this range. The medium temperature insulation ranges from 90 to 325 degree Celsius. The insulator in this range used in low temperature heating, steam, raising equipments, flue ducts and steam lines. The material including 85 percent magnesia, calcium silicate, mineral fibers and asbestos they are used in the temperature range. Last category in this regard is the high temperature insulation and that is about 325 degree Celsius. They are used in the superheated steam system, oven dryers, furnaces, mostly asbestos, mineral fiber, mica, vermiculite based insulation, ceramic fibers, fire clay or silica based insulation and calcium silicate. Let us talk about the insulating material. Now, insulating materials can also be classified into organic and inorganic type. The organic insulating materials, in, this includes the hydrocarbon polymers expand to the obtain the high void structure such as polyurethane foam and thermocool that is expanded um, polystyrene. Inorganic insulation material which is based up on siliceous, aluminiaceous calcium material in fibrous, granular and powder forms like calcium silicate and mineral wools. There are some common insulating materials like thermocol. It is used in the cold insulation for piping and a cold storage construction and it is very popular. The calcium silicate used in industrial process 
plant piping at high temperature service and compressive strength are needed and the temperature ranges from 40 to 950 degrees Celsius. Now, this is the figure which shows the calcium silicate uh, insulation material. Now, glass mineral wools. Now, it is available in flexible form, rigid slabs and in pipe work sections. It has a good application in thermal acoustic insulation for heating and chilling system pipelines. It have the temperature range ranges from minus 10 to 500 degrees Celsius and here you see that this is uh, the glass mineral wool. Extended nitrile rubber, now it can form a closed um, cell integral vapor uh, barrier by its flexible material. It was first developed and have application for condensation control in refrigeration and chilled water lines and ducting insulation for air conditioning. Rock mineral wool, it is available in the, the range from lightweight rolled product to heavy rigid slabs. Apart from good thermal insulation properties, it can also provide acoustic insulation and fire retardant properties. Now, let us talk about the insulation fundamental and principles. Now, in this category, the heat transfer mechanism plays a very vital role. So, let us talk about the heat transfer mechanism. Heat or thermal energy flows continuously through material and space taking the path of least resistance and flowing from the warmer object to the colder object. To understand how uh, thermal insulation works, it helps to understand the three mechanisms of heat energy transfer. One is convection, conduction and radiation. Now, in this particular aspect, we will understand that the insulation fundamental and principle for the only thermal insulation. Let us talk about the convection. Now, convection is the transfer of heat by physically moving the molecules from one place to another. Now, convection takes place uh, when a fluid such as a gas or a liquid is heated and moved from one place to another. Now, when warm air in the room rises and the forces the cooler air down, the convection is taking place and air when heated expands and rises. Now, if this air movement is created mechanically by a flow register fan or wind, it is called the forced convection. When uh, the sun heats the warm air and it rises causing the cold air to settle to create a convection loop, it is termed as a free convection. Now, the equation for the heat transfer through convection, it can be written as Q that is the capital Q is equal to small q over A is equal to H A into T 1 minus T 2. Now, here this Q is the heat flux having the unit in watt per meter square. Now, H is the convective heat transfer coefficient having the unit of watt per meter square Kelvin. This Q is the heat transfer rate in watts through the convection in a slab. Uh, a is the cross sectional area of heat transfer and represented in terms of square meter. The T 1 and T 2, they are the two temperature different, uh, different temperature in either side of the slab. Let us talk about the conduction. Conduction is the process by which uh, heat transfer takes place in solid matter, such as direct flow of heat through a material within a single or two separate bodies in direct contact. Now, it is the, uh, the molecule to molecule transfer of kinetic energy. So, suppose this is the hotter body and this is the colder body. This molecule to molecule transfer can take place with respect to the kinetic energies until the temperature in both the slabs become uniform. A cast iron skillet handle uh, heats up because of the conduction through the metal from the heat energy provided by the burner on the stove. In insulation, because of lower densities, they are designed to suppress the conduction 
and convection across them by entrapment of air molecules within their structure. Now again uh, let us talk about uh, the mathematical representation or equation for heat transfer through conduction. This can be written as uh, Q, small q over A, this K A A upon X into T1 minus T2. Now this Q is the heat flux in watt per meter square. K is the conductive heat transfer coefficient having the unit of watt per Kelvin. Q is this Q is the heat transfer rate in watt through the conduction in slab. X is the thickness of the slab in meter. A is the area of cross section of the heat transfer in meter square and T1 and T2 they are the two different temperature in either side of the slab and they are represented in Kelvin. Let us talk about the radiation. Now this is the third way of transfer of energy. The way the sun warms, warms the surface of earth which involves the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves and absorption of that energy by the surface. Now radiant heat transfer between object operates independently of air, cur air current and controlled by the character of surface emissivity and the temperature difference between hot and cold object. Now emissivity refers to the ability of material surface to emit radiant energy. All of the material have emissivity between ranging from 0 to 1. Now the equation again um, we need to represent this uh, with the help of a mathematical correlation or equation. So the equation for the heat transfer through radiation can be written as Q is equal to small q over A psilon small sigma A T1 to the power 4 minus T to the power 4. Now Q is the heat flux in watt per meter square, psilon is the emissivity, this one. This is Q is the heat transfer rate um, W, theta is the Stephens constant and A is the area of cross section of heat transfer and represented as meter square and T1 and T2 again they are the two different temperature and unit is Kelvin. Now resistance of these modes of heat transfer this uh, may be retarded by the elements of a building wall section and the elements includes outside surface film. The outside surface traps the thin film of air which resists heat flow and this film section varies with the wind velocity and uh, surface roughness. Material layer. Each layer of material contributes to the resistance of uh, heat flow usually according to its uh, density. Air space, such miserable air space as well as its thickness also add to the overall resistance. Inside surface film, the inside surface of uh, building section also traps uh, a thin film of air. Let us talk about the heat flow. The heat always flows uh, from uh, a warmer object to a colder object in terms of building and we refer to heat flow in a number of different ways. It is the measurement of uh, this heat flow that allows for the mathematical analysis of wall, floor and ceiling assemblies. Here U value and R value are most common method used. Let us talk about U value. The flow rate of heat through a building product is known as U value. It is a measure of flow of heat through material given a different temperature on either side. The U factor is the number of British thermal unit that is represented as BTU of energy passing through a square foot of the material in hour for every degree Fahrenheit difference in temperature across the material and that is the BTU per fit square hour degree Fahrenheit. In metric system it is usually given as watt per meter square degree Celsius. Lower the U value the more slowly does the material transfer heat in and out of the home. It is usually used in expressing overall thermal conductance since it is a measurement of the rate of heat flow through the complete barrier from room air to outside air. R value that is resistance to heat transfer. For other building materials 
such as insulation, roofing and flooring material, the R value is frequently used for conducted heat gain or loss. The R value is the measurement of a product's resistance to heat flow and higher R value the better is the resistance to the flow of heat. It can be measured by testing laboratories usually called guarded hot box. To ensure that consumers are provided with accurate information regarding R value, the Federal Trade Commission in 1980 established a rule that mandates the specific R value information for home insulation product to be disclosed. Relationship between R value and U value. U value is customary unit used by the industry to quantify conducted heat gain or loss, but with other building materials such as insulation, roofing and flooring materials, R value is used frequently for conducted heat gain or loss. There is a simple relationship between U and R. U is equal to 1 by R or R is equal to 1 by U. Let us talk about the temperature. This is uh, the one of the most common phenomena to be addressed in um, the insulation. Most of the insulation material have a, a higher value, higher R value at uh, lower temperature. The variation in values is caused by the change in the conductivity of air within the insulation and by changes in radiant heat transfer. Thickness. R value increases linearly with thickness. Recently, advances in thermal insulation technology have been shown. A phenomenon known as uh, thickness effect in low density material, and that is the thickness effect in is an apparent decrease in R value per inch with increased thickness. Heat transfer through insulation. For heat transfer through the flat surface of the insulating material, the heat transfer equation for flat surface, these can be written as Q is equal to small q over A that is equal to T1 minus T2 upon X over K, where T1 and T2, they are the temperature in Kelvin, X is the thickness of insulating material or insulation. K is the thermal conductivity and having the unit of watt per meter Kelvin and Q is the heat flux transfer watt per meter square. Now, let us uh, take up couple of questions uh, uh, as a numerical. Now, if uh, uh, first question that is if one end of insulating material is maintained at 145 degree Celsius temperature and the other end is maintained at uh, 23.5 degree Celsius. The heat transfer through the insulation is 80 watt per meter squared and thermal conductivity is 0 0.062 watt per meter Kelvin. Then what will be the thickness of insulation for this amount of heat transfer? Now see, uh, in this uh, particular, to solve this particular question, we are having this uh, uh, heat transfer equation and that is Q is equal to T1 minus T2 over X over K. Now, it is given that uh, Q into QA that is the heat flux is 80 watt per meter square. Now, this is uh, the direction of heat transfer and this is uh, the typical figure of uh, a slab. Here T1 is given as 145 degree Celsius and T2 is given as 23.5 degree Celsius and K is also supplied in the question and that is 0 0.062 watt per meter Kelvin. Now, if we substitute these values in the in this rate equation, then we have 80 is equal to 145 minus 23.5 over x over 0 0.062. So, you will get the x as uh, equal to 0 0.0942 meter. Similarly, equation for heat transfer through uh, two or more thickness for the insulation of different uh, thermal insulation K can be written as um, Q over A that is the heat flux that is equal to T1 minus T4 upon X1 over K1 
plus x2 over k2 plus x3 over k3. Actually, here you are having three different slabs, 1, 2 and 3. So, this is represented and here the initial temperature is T1 and uh, finally, the temperature is uh, T4 and these three slabs are aligned together. So, the interface temperature is T1 between T first slab and second slab and interface temperature is T3 between the slab 2 and slab 3. So, it is 1 upon k equivalent is equal to uh, x1 over k1 plus x2 over k2 plus x3 over k3. Now, here x1 is the uh, the the length of this uh, this uh, slab number one, x two is the length of uh, this uh, uh, slab number two, and x three is for third slab. Now uh, let's talk about the second question. In this particular question, find out the thickness of the insulation x one if x two is e equal to uh, zero point zero three meter, so that the heat transfer through it. Uh, will be less than 215.40 watt per meter square. If the temperature on one side of the insulation is the 360 degrees Celsius and in the middle is 240 degrees Celsius and the other side is 46 degrees Celsius, the thermal conductivity of the first insulation connected to the series is 0 0.108 watt per meter Kelvin and the other side is 0 0.072 watt per meter Kelvin. So, we know that the heat transfer equation for such condition which is already discussed that is Q is equal to T1 minus T3 upon x1 over k1 plus x2 over k2. It is given that x2 is equal to 0 0.03 meter, q is equal to 215.40 watt per meter square, T1 is given as 360 degree Celsius, T3 is given as 46 degree Celsius. K1 is given as 0 0.108 watt per meter Kelvin and K2 is given as 0 0.072 watt per meter Kelvin. Now, if we substitute these values in this particular equation, then we get 215.40 is equal to 360 minus 46 upon x1 over 0 0.108 plus 0 0.03 over 0 0.072. So, by this way we get x1 is equal to 0.1124 meter. So, in this particular chapter we discussed the various aspects of insulation. We categorized the different parameters and discussed couple of numericals. For your convenience we have enlisted couple of references. If you wish you can have further study with the help of these references. Thank you very much.